Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most Most merciful God, God, we we confess confess that we have sinned sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done done, and by what we have have left undone. We have have not not loved you with our whole heart. We have have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. The Venite. Come, Come, let us sing sing to the Lord. Lord. Let Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his his hands have molded the dry land. land. Come, Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O let today we hearken to his voice. The psalm appointed is Psalm 105, which we will say in unison. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord in his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen, then he called for a famine in the land and destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before him, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They buried his feet in fetters, his neck they put in an iron collar, until his projection came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The rulers of the people set him free. He set him forth as a master over his household as a ruler over all his possessions, to instruct his princes according to his will, and to teach his elders wisdom. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked him, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where they are pasturing the flock. The man said, They have gone away, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. He said to them from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him 
out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty, there was no water. Then they sat down to eat, and looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels carrying gum, balm, and resin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh, and his brothers agree. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up lifting him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Canticle 21, You Are God. You are God, God we, we pray to. You. You. you are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are, you are the, the eternal, eternal Father. Father. All, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, heaven. Cherubim and seraphim, sing an endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship and the Holy Spirit. Advocate and God. A reading from Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does those things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Canticle 8, the song of Moses. I will sing to the Lord, for he, for he is lofty and uplifted. uplifted. The horse and his rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my Savior. This is my God, and I will praise him. The God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and the workers of wonders? You stretch forth your right hand, the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession. The resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. 
And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, be not afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. There is irony in Peter, always rushing in prematurely, saying what others only think, doing what others wouldn't dare. Jesus tells a parable. Jesus asks him to explain. Questions Jesus first of all the disciples, understands the true identity of Jesus before all the other disciples. But he's clueless until the very end about what this will cost him. This is Petros, the church's rock, Never would deny Jesus? Well, not more than uh, three times. He's the enthusiastic type, the one who talks a better game than he plays, yet he pulls it all off with a level of sincerity. It's easy to find Peter both appealing and, well, rather obnoxious. Peter is like us, very relatable in so many ways. He's full of doubt and overflowing with faith. No faith. That's for sure. But if you and I were telling the gospel story, at the approach of Jesus, all of humanity would say, get us the heck out of here, Jesus. Get us to dry land, if you please, Lord Jesus. Dry land. We want dry land, Jesus. But Peter says, if it is you, bid me come to you on the water. Wow. In other words, show me that what you can do, I can do, if only you will tell me to. Take away my doubt, make me have faith, and splash. Okay, stop for a minute. Just stop. We have three choices. How do we go from here? Well, we could take the story, we could shrink it down, and we could make it small and somehow get control over it. Tell a joke, for example. The three clergymen in a boat out fishing. One of the clergymen says, gentlemen, I need to leave and uh, go to the restroom. I'll be back. He comes back, gets in the boat, keeps fishing. Second clergyman says, gentlemen, I'm going to go on over to shore and I'm going to get something to drink. It's hot out here. I'll be glad to get you lunch. And they say, sure. And off he goes, walks across the water, comes back with lunch, passes it out, and sits back down to fish. Well, the third clergyman's an Episcopalian. The other two are a Roman Catholic and a Methodist. The Episcopalian's been watching this go on, and he says to himself, well, he says, if a Roman Catholic and a Methodist can walk on water, surely an Episcopalian can. And so he says, gentlemen, I'm going over to shore. I'll be back in a couple minutes. Gets up, walks out of the boat, takes two steps, splash into the water. Well, the Roman Catholic and the Methodist are watching this. After a bit, one says to the other, John, maybe we should have told him where those stepping stones were. A joke. Or we could say, this whole story is nothing more than one gigantic hyperbole. And now that we've given it a label, we can take the label 
put it off on the shelf, pat it on the back and say, okay, enough of that, on to something else. Or third choice, we can humble thyself. We can seek to understand this gospel's spiritual significance. You thought, did you, doubting Thomas being the only person who bought the farm on doubt? But now in this hospital, this hospital reflects on Peter. If the character of Peter sounds just a little bit familiar to you, add your name to the list. As every one of us who ever saw the movie Schindler's List knows, the list is life, so best be on it. Thomas and Peter are both charter members of the doubt list. Sign on, sign up, it's a good place to be. So why do we doubt? And then, why did Peter get out of the boat? Idiot, faithful idiot, he was at that. We doubt because we are afraid. John, it is now in his first epistle, who says this, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Okay. But when Peter encounters Jesus walking on the water and fears, does that mean his love for Jesus is defective? By no means. You see, the journey across the sea isn't quite over. So, it ain't therefore been perfected yet, nor has it for us. Have you given all you have to give to Jesus? Given your all? Well, not yet. You and I, are, we're still alive. Our journey is going on, and perfection comes at the end when all is in its place perfectly. We're not there yet. So, along the way, it's only understandable that we have fear. We do it faithfully, too. It's not perfect love. Not stop loving yet. By comparison in today's story, the sea is so vast, the storm is so overwhelming, we, imperfect lovers as we are, are easily sunk. Life's like that today. With COVID-19 and Black Lives Matter, referring to a travesty of racism that's been going on since the end of the Civil War and a lot longer than that. Beyond our controlling, although we might greatly micromanage our small half acre of it, we feel helpless because we are helpless. What? Is that true? What's the use? Paul writes an epistle to the Romans. Let me put Paul into the picture now. Him, too, with the other guys, and you and me. Paul says this. Let me just reverse it a bit. He says, if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. In other words, believe and then act upon it. Draw upon the strength of others. Why do we need Jesus? Because we wouldn't want to be caught dead on the water without him? Not really. It's more like this. Our fears and doubts may paralyze us, literally, but they are also what it is that makes us cry out to be saved. They motivate us to ask, to reach out to another person, to connect, or at least make the attempt. Peter asked Jesus to save him from drowning. A prideful man would happily just drown in place. So how can doubt be all that bad when it causes us to reach outside ourselves? Doubt prompts relationship. Faith is a relationship. The resurrection grounds relationship in Christ. The Holy Spirit builds relationship through Christ. 
the community of faithful, the church celebrates relationship with Christ. Now, we may wish to live totally independent lives, be the American stereotypical self-made man and woman. It don't work. Better to build loving, interdependently healthy lives by sharing and living out of a mutual need together with someone else. You see, relationships aren't built out of our strength, but they come forth out of our need. It is our need that nurtures them, gives them purpose. Basically, we need forgiveness. Peter reached out to Jesus, not out of his strength at that moment, but obviously out of his need. If we never sunk, and we could walk on water perfectly by ourselves, we'd never need a Savior at all. And neither would have Peter or John or Paul or Thomas or you or I. We'd need no one, independent, totally perfect, self-contained, my life's in control type people. Well, guess what? Those kind of folks, they are lonely. Lonely and lost. That's the irony. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages Set A. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline your hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give him thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The intercession and thanksgiving for this day is Form 3. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That, that they, they may be faithful ministers of your, of your word and sacraments. sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there, that may, there may be justice and peace on the earth. earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may and find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they, they may, may be delivered from, from their distress. distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let, Let light, light perpetual shine, shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we Who's also come to share your heavenly kingdom. kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Heavenly Father, you promise to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray. Not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.